All right. Um, uh, good morning, church. Um, uh, first and foremost, uh, we just want to apologize for uh, starting our service a little bit late. Uh, we have uh, techno uh, technical problems again today. We are working so hard, and uh, we pray that uh, God will help us through this. But uh, for those who are planning to go on uh, YouTube, uh, for the first service, uh, I think uh, you don't have to. You have to come back and watch us live on Facebook. Um, so, my name is Eric. I'm the pastor at Mount Hope United you know, Methodist Church. Uh, I want to just uh, raise, we begin our service today. I'm going to invite Natalia to uh, start the service. you. Uh, we are in the house of the Lord. We should always rejoice and be glad in it. And uh, this is the day the Lord has made. Um, um, this particular moment, uh, before I invite you for, for prayer, just to uh, share with you all that next uh, Sunday, uh, January 17th, we are going to reopen in-person service, both, uh, both services, 9.30 and uh, uh, 11 o'clock uh, pray so that God can always protecting us as he has been doing since we're born God is so good um, as I said before that uh, again uh, let me repeat for those that join maybe uh, now that we are not able to go live on YouTube we are just uh, live on Facebook we are apology again from us. So let us pray together in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Uh, let us pray. And then as we go home later on, please remind, uh, take your time, open your Bible, and read Psalm 93. 
read it. As I said uh, last week, that we are going to read this book, Psalm 93, for the entire month of uh, uh, January. So, for the sake of time, we just let go straight and pray together in Jesus' name. We are going to pray for our brother Joe Groth. Is right now is in the hospital. Is getting better. And uh, let us pray for uh, people who have been uh, 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 tested positive for COVID. Let us pray for our country. You know what we are going through right now. Let us pray for peace and and, and uh, love and grace and um, to be upon our lives. So let us pray uh, for the transitions, and the government, everything. Just pray for everything. God says, pray for everything. Let us pray in Jesus' name, shall we? Oh, yes, Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, eternal God, holy and living Father, we come to you right now this moment. Father, we stand on your word. A day like this was known by you, Christ the Lord. We thank you for this moment. God, we thank you even for the difficulties we are facing right now, Lord, in terms of technologies. We give all the glory because you are God and nothing will take you from your throne. You sit on that. Holy and living Father, we are here, Lord, as a church of Father God to pray for forgiveness. We pray, God, have mercy on us. Not only for the church, oh God, for the world, have mercy on us, Lord. We have sinned against you in so many ways. Holy and living God. You are the sea divider. You are the maker of heaven and earth. You sit on the throne. You are that I am. Lord, I will bless you this morning. Lord, I lift up our God as a church together with my brothers and sisters, brother Joe Groth. We pray, God, for your hands to be always upon his life and dealing, Lord, to be revealed. Pray, God, for our brothers and sisters in Christ who are struggling, Lord, from any difficulties in their, in their lives. Spiritually, financially, intellectually, physically, emotionally, God. We speak for healing through the power of the name of Jesus Christ. We pray, God, for freedom. Freedom, Lord, from those struggles. We give praise and honor Christ the Lord. Because you are the peacemaker, we pray for peace in their lives. Holy and living God, pray for our ministry as we begin this year. We pray, God, for the journey that, Lord, you have called us as a church to fast for 21 days. Give us strength, open our eyes to see what we can take as a fast. Lord, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Bless our church, Lord, spiritually, financially, intellectually, physically. We thank you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. For this moment you have given unto us to worship you. Here we are. Deal with us, God. In Jesus' name, we pray together and we say, Amen. Let us pray the Lord's prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us as our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now, church, I'm inviting uh, uh, Mark. He's uh, going to share with us with the special music in Italian. A little while ago in Italian, introduced me to a, a hymn that I have never heard before. The title of it is My Shepherd Will Supply My Need. It's a hymn written by Isaac Watts, and um, uh, it's based on the words of Psalm 23. Let me share with you the lyrics. My shepherd will supply my need. Jehovah is his name. In pastures fresh he makes me feed beside the living stream. He brings my wandering spirit back when I forsake his way and leads me for his mercy's sake in paths of truth and grace. 
When I walk through the shades of death, his presence is my stay. One word of his supporting grace drives all my fears away. His hand in sight of all my foes doth still my table spread. My cup with blessings overflows. His oil anoints my head. The sure provisions of my God attend me all my days. O oh, may thy house be my abode, in all my work be praise. There would I find a settled rest while others go and come, no more a stranger nor a guest, but like a child at home. This hymn is sung to the tune, of a southern tune called Resignation, and we're sharing with you an arrangement that Natalia composed. Thank you, Mark. God bless you. Uh, thank you, Natalia. Now we are going to uh, uh, share the word of God together, my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, let me begin by saying that uh, uh, as you are watching now, I will, you know, uh, I will encourage you, you know, to take even a, a cup of. Uh, um, cup of coffee or uh, juice uh, next to you or uh, you know even water the reason why I'm saying this I want you to bear with me this morning 
I fully believe that I need to finish my sermon from the beginning until the end. So bear with me. Uh, and I believe that we are Christians who have been taught to be patient by COVID-19. Uh, so if we were able to stay in our homes for the whole year, 2020, so you'll be able to stay with me as I preach for 25 minutes. So I'm encouraging you to bear with me so that I deliver exactly what the Lord Jesus Christ has given to me for all of us about the power of fasting and prayer. So pray with me. Holy and living Father, I humble myself before you as your vessel. On this particular day, God, I say thank you even if other things are not working according. Lord, I lift up for God and this service before you. I pray for my brothers and sisters who are watching all over the world, in Africa, in America, in Europe, Lord. Let your word, Father God, speak to them. Use me as your vessel. As I humble myself, Lord, before you, I pray for your presence. Jesus, may you increase as I decrease. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So we are, we are in this journey together. Friend, uh, fasting is not only a requirement for believers. But fasting is a command from Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Not only a command, but Jesus Christ himself fasted. So brothers and sisters in Christ, if Muslims, if Muslims believe, I have a slide, even Muslims believe in fasting and prayer and they do it for 40 days on Ramadan. If Hindus and Buddhists believe in fasting and prayer and they do it, therefore I believe the Church of Christ, of Jesus Christ, should take also what the Bible teaches about fasting and prayer. Why? Jesus did fast for 40 days. Moses did fast for 40 days. Elijah fasted for 40 days. Daniel fasted for 21 days. Paul, he fasted for 7 days, 10 days. 40 days. If you read the Bible, you are going to hear that Paul was consistent, consistently in fasting spirit. Peter did fast for three days. The early church had a day of fasting and prayer. The Bible teaches us that if you are a believer, you will fast. So in order for us to understand this message this morning, allow me to, uh, you know, we are going to read us, we are going to reflect from a story that will help us really to uh, fully understand what God has for us on the power of fasting and prayer. So let us uh, read the book of uh, uh, Exodus 17, 11 to 12. You know, I have the word on the screen. Exodus 17, 11 to 12. Now this is a story about the Israelite, a story about the Israelite fighting against Amalek. And God commanded Moses to go up to the mountains 
and lift up his hand. That was a command. And the Bible says, as long as Moses lifted up his hand, the Israelites were winning the battle. And we are told that Aaron and the other priests who helped Moses' hands to remain up so that they kept on winning. But watch this, my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. The Bible says, as long as Moses had the physical obedience, he was winning the battle in the unseen world. The victory, in other words, the victory came because of Moses' physical obedience. This story is very important today as we we are all fasting and prayer for 21 days. I believe it reinforces the fact that physical obedience brings spiritual release. There is a connection, my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, between what you do physically and what happens spiritually. What we do in the presence of God can affect what is happening in the unseen world. My fellow friends, Moses was raising up his hand physically. Why? Because God told Moses to do it. God told Moses to do it. And the Bible says whenever his hand started getting tired, the Israelites were losing. In other words, when his hands was going down, angels who were helping the Israelites in their fight started to withdraw. And the Israelites were losing the battle. But when his hand was up, the angel, they could not see them, could help them to win the battle. Here is the point that the Lord is bringing to us. As long as Moses obeyed God to raise up his hand, physical acts, raise up your hand, that's a physical act. As long as Moses did that, the battle was won. As long as he did that. Another word, my fellow brothers and sisters, the victory came because of uh, what Moses was doing physically. What Moses was doing. If his hand goes down, they were losing. If his hand went up, they were winning. They were winning. Praise the Lord. This reminds me from the book of uh, First Timothy, verses uh, chapter two, and I have the word. It says this: I desire, therefore. What the man pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. Wow, the word here, wrath, you know, means do not get mad at God when God gives you an instruction. Do not get mad. And the word doubting means uh, here do not question God how about what good does lift up the hands can bring or cannot bring you just lift them up that's the physical act God is saying you don't need to question and say why am I doing this when God says lift up your hands 
You just lift up your hand. The rest, God will take care of. The truth is this. Physical obedience brings spiritual reward. My fellow brothers and sisters, listen to this. I have this, I have it on my screen. Listen to this. How much more? If the raising up, the raising of the hands bring victory in the old covenant, in the time of Moses, and what could fast and pray do under the new covenant of Jesus Christ? Who fasted as an example, who did fast for 40 days. I believe that something greater will happen. If we follow him by setting aside time to fast and pray, our physical obedience will bring spiritual release. Especially when you do it without doubt and without saying, what good does it do to fast? Especially when you do it. Fasting does good because God says, do it. That's good. There's a scripture that we are going to look into on Matthew 17. And Jesus replied, these things could be only done by fasting and prayer. My fellow friends, you know, one thing I've come to realize is this. In the modern church, we have reduced everything down to feelings and intellects. Everything. Not to any physical actions. This is what we say. I feel like I'm humble. So I'm not going to get on my knees before the Lord. This is what we say. I feel like I'm worshiping the Lord only on the inside. I don't have to clap my hands. Everything is on the inside. I don't have to raise up my hand in the church even at home and jump and say glory to God. Why? Because everything is now inside. I don't have to shout for joy in the church and say glory, hallelujah. Why? Because everything now is inside. I don't have to stand up and worship uh, God physically with my whole body because God, uh, you know, because God knows my heart. I feel faith in me. And so what we do, we just say, I don't have to risk anything because I have faith in my heart. Everything has been reduced down to a modern church, to eternal stuff. And there is no outcome manifestation. I want you to think about me with this statement. I put it on the screen there. I want you to think of with me. Think with me. Think with me. If you tell your wife or husband, children, grandchildren, that I love you, but you never show them that love on the outside, they are going to question. They are going to, I guarantee you, they are going to question. So what God is saying to us is this. God is saying, sometimes I demand my people a physical act of obedience before I release a spiritual reward and blessings. God is saying a fasting and prayer is one of those acts of obedience. 
Friend, there are times when God requires all of us for a physical actions. You know, I'm so surprised because of what happened today in this world. The world has told all of us, Christians, Muslims, Hindus, all of us, and believers, the world has told us to wear masks and social distances from one another. That's why some of you, many of us, we were not even able to celebrate Christmas together, including your own child. You have to tell him or her that you are not coming closer to me because of COVID. And we all did it without doubts, without question. That's a sign of physical obedience. The world has told us, and we are still doing it, but we are doing it without question, without doubt. These are the signs of physical obedience. There are times when God requires physical action for spiritual result. Why? Because there is a connection. Friend Moses with his hand up. That is, that is physical obedience. A victory was for them. Physical obedience released spiritual power. Physical obedience released favor. Release help from God. Yes. Release protection from God. Yes. Release healing from God. Yes. Release miracles from God. Release blessing from God. Even if you haven't seen yet, but those blessings and favor, they are still coming to you. Amen. Let me prove it with you, with the scripture. In the book of Daniel, Chapter 10, verses 3 and 11. I'm just not going to read it, but we have it on the screen. You, I want you to, to hear this. Daniel is saying, I ate no pleasant food. That means I became a vegetarian. In other words, Daniel is saying, I ate no desirable food and God response was oh Daniel you are greatly desired by me hallelujah oh Daniel you are greatly loved by me in other words Daniel is saying <laughs> I love this I had no desirable food and I became a man greatly desired by God within my 21 days of fasting. Daniel had to look for God's favor by going through a physical sacrifice where he put all the desirable food away. And when he did that, God released an angel from heaven just for Daniel. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Praise the Lord. Friend, if you don't get it, let me share this with you. If you never, you don't know, but today I want you to oh, I want you to hear this it will help you to open your eyes. I want you to hear this. Angels in heaven do not have jobs. Their jobs in heaven is only worshiping God day and night in the morning hallelujah glory to God at noon hallelujah glory to God in the evening hallelujah glory to they don't have job they are jobless people in heaven but the only way they got jobs they got hired is two ways 
Number one, they got hired when they are being sent by God with specific mission. That's when angels in heaven, they start working. Sometimes, you know, we, we Christians, we are trying, oh, we are trying to avoid talking about angels. No, I have to, we need to talk about angels because we could not celebrate the coming of Jesus Christ without the coming, without angel Gabriel, the messenger. That's the only way they get to work. They are being sent by God and God said, go, I'm sending you for a specific mission. That like what happened to Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ. That's number one, one way. The second way is when you and I pray. When you and I pray, angels in heaven, they got hired by you. They come for you. God send them to you. When you read the Bible, you are going to understand many places angels came when people, a nation, a community, a person pray and God send angels. Go, go at work. That's what happened with Daniel. In the book of Daniel, hear what the Bible says. Daniel chapter 10, 12 to 13. Listen to this. The Bible says the prayer of Daniel was heard on the first day, but his answer was delayed because of the prince of Persia, of kingdom. That's another, another kingdom, kingdom of darkness. Resisted the angel, and then God sent a backup. Hallelujah! God sent a backup. Watch this. Friend, our prayers are being heard. Are being heard. We don't need to stop praying after two or three days and say, My prayer is not heard. Sometimes it looks like nothing is changing. When we pray and fast, and we wonder if God is hearing our prayers. But here, here is the good news. God does hear our prayers. I want to tell somebody to keep on praying and presenting their lives with this physical obedience to God. God will send the backup to show you and me that he is God. Daniel did not stop praying. If you don't have an idea, it was not easy for Daniel. On those days, it was, it was very hard. But he did pray. He kept on praying. One day, he started. Until 10th and 11th, Daniel kept on praying. And the Bible says, God sent the backup, another angel, Michael, to help the other angel to deliver the message to them. My fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, allow me to share, you, share with you my story, my personal life story, and I fully believe the Lord was putting this in my heart and said, share it. Fellow brothers and sisters, I grew up, I grew up in a Christian family. And uh, as I stand before you, I'm a fallen man without Jesus Christ. I messed up. And the only person who can witness the way I messed up is my wife, Corinne. I messed up. I used to attend churches. And something happened when I traveled from my own land, Congo, to Zimbabwe. I've got a picture of me on the mountains there. For those who went with me to Africa University, they know what I'm talking about, about that mountain. By the time I got to Africa University, I remember well, I remember well, 
and I was buying meals as days goes by. And one day I never had a bank account. My only bank account was my wallet. My wallet. That's one, my wallet. That was my only bank account. My money was always in my wallet. And one day I checked my wallet. I had only $20 for four months as my pocket money. For four months. And I said, oh my God, I'm not gonna make it with, four, with, with $20 for four months. So I took that money. I went to the bookshop at Africa University. And I bought Bible. Bought a Bible. I bought it. So I took the Bible, I went back to my room. I started studying for an hour. As I was going through it, I came across to the experience about Jesus Christ fasting for 40 days and praying. I was really touched and inspired. And I took my Bible, I went to my friend's room, and those friends, they were singing in the choir. I don't know how to sing, and I've never sung in the choir. But they were my good friends. I talked to them if they can join me in fasting and prayer. And they say, yes, Brother Eric. Then I was not even doing theology. So nobody called me Pastor Eric. So we started, we agreed to tell nobody on campus. We agreed to fast for 21 days. We, we, we fasted from watching TV for 21 days, including soccer, 21 days. We said no soccer, nothing on TV, 21 days. And we stopped eating food. For 21 days, the only thing we used to, to eat, it was two slices of bread and one cup of tea. And we have to do it at 6 p.m. to get it. And we avoided also to walk with many people. And our prayer focus was, God, we need more of you, less of us. We started a journey, my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. And we used to pray three times per day. 5 a.m. we went on that mountain. That's why you can see that picture because it was my friend who took it for me. And 12 o'clock we met in the chapel. We prayed. And five o'clock again, we met beyond the theology building. We prayed. We agreed. But something happened. On the tenth, one of us came and said, Brothers, I can't make it. I'm tired. I need to go and start eating and be in my normal life. We blessed him. And we told him, do not tell anyone. We remained two. We kept on going with the other, I kept on going with my friend. After 15 days, the 15th, he came to me and said, Brother Eric, oh my, I can't do it anymore. And I blessed him. He said, do not tell anybody that we are fasting. And he went. On the 20, 20th, after 20 days, after 20 days, I was dying. I cried to God. I said, Lord, help me to finish my race. I cried. I was tired, I could not even go to class. I said, Lord, I need more of you. Less of me. I need you, Lord. I came that mountain by myself. At 5 a.m., I came down. 
on the 21, the last day, not even do a prayer. I was sleeping around 4 a.m. 4 a.m. I saw a dream. I saw a dream, a man standing, wearing white, shining like a light, looking at me straight and saying, I heard your prayer. That man opened the book and it was a Bible. He opened to me and he said, read this. And I read some chapter 20 if you have time at home read it and i was reading it i was reading it my roommate was studying in the room around four o'clock my roommate could see my mouth moving but he could not hear a word the only word he heard was when i ended up when i finished reading that scripture he heard me say, praise God, amen. And he looked at me, I looked at him, I picked up my Bible, I went on the mountain, I was just crying and said, praise the Lord. Thank you for your favor, thank you for your blessing, thank you God because you have spoken. My fellow brothers and sisters, why am I sharing this with you? I'm just nothing. I'm just nothing. When I look at where I came from, if it was not about Jesus Christ, I could not be here. I'm not qualified without Jesus Christ. I'm not even qualified to preach to you, my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, if it was not about Jesus Christ. I traveled to many countries Many states to preach about Jesus Christ, but I'm not qualified if it was not about Jesus Christ. It is all about Jesus Christ I'm standing here. And Jesus said, if you give yourself to me physically with the spirit of obedience, I, Lord, I will bless you. I will give you favor. I will raise you up to speak about me. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, be with me. We are about to finish. We are about to finish. Friend, there are times in our lives as Christians where God comes to us not with a demand, but with a challenge. You don't have to do it. You are not more holy if you fast, you are not. But it is a divine challenge. And God can come in that way for a specific mission. As we begin together this journey for 21 days of fasting from the beginning of this year. This is the time where you can say to God, I want a partnership with you again. This is the time you and I, we can say, God, our church need a partnership with you. My family need a partnership with you. Our country need a partnership with you, Lord. Our community, our city need a partnership with you. My neighbors need a partnership with you. This is the time. Friend, what you do physically, like Moses, where he lift up his hand up, he will bring blessings to you. Catch this. The physical response of Moses by raising up his hand was recognized by God in heaven. The physical response of Daniel by not eating desirable food for 21 days was recognized by God in heaven. The physical response of the lepers in the Bible by going down on their knees was recognized by God in heaven. 
the physical response of David dancing, dancing in the altar uh, before the altar, dancing before the altar in the chapel, in the, in the temple. He was dancing for the Lord. He was dancing for the Lord. Was recognized by God. What I'm preaching to you is that your physical response you are going through these days is being recognized by God. And God says, I will bless you for that. I will bring spiritual release for that. There is a slide I put on there. Your physical obedience. In other words, the physical obedience. Serving others. Giving to this church. Preaching the gospel. Worshipping him through music and dancing. Fasting and prayer. And not going in vain at all. God will bless you. God will bring spiritual release. God will bring healing. God will, will, God will bring restoration to our land. God will bring restoration to our lives. God will send favor again to us. Amen. Because of your spirit, your physical obedience. As I'm closing, let me close with this word from the book of Matthew chapter 17. This is the story about the disciples asking Jesus Christ, why are we not casting demons? And hear the answer from the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, oh, faithless and preserve generation. How long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him. Bring him here to me. There are two powerful words I underline. I want you to catch this. Oh, number one. Faithless. I have it on the screen. Faithless. It means not connecting to God. In other words, Jesus is saying, you have disconnected from me. You have disconnected from the church. You have disconnected from praise and worship. You have disconnected from being hungry for me. You have disconnected from my presence. And when you disconnect from me, unbelief start taking place in your life. You are not faith-filled anymore. Unbelief start taking over you and as a result, you know as a result, when unbelief start taking over us, fear takes place in us, worries takes place in us, hopelessness takes place in us, despair start growing in you and in me. In other words, what God was saying and is saying to us, we are disconnected from the living word of God, then if you do, if we do that, we become faithless generation. Number two. There's another word on this. That's Jesus. He's, he's speaking to us and he was speaking to the disciples. He said this word. Preserved. That means connected to the world. In other words, Jesus is saying, you are not connected to God because you are too connected to the world. Jesus is saying, you are connected to the worldly life. You are picking up stuff that are not supposed to be 
in your life. Jesus is saying, you are picking up stuff that I set you free from. You are just like the world. You are not connected to me. And there is an answer from that. That's a good thing with Jesus. And here the answer. Then Jesus said, let me tell you how to fix your faithless and preserve that we are facing today. And he said that the answer is coming from the book of Matthew 17, 21. That's where the answer is. Here is, here is the answer. I love this. I love it. Hallelujah. I love it. Jesus said, however, this kind, this kind does not go out except by what? By prayer and fasting. That was the answer. And what is prayer? Prayer, I have been on that. Prayer is connecting yourself to God. What is prayer? Prayer is connecting back to God. And the, the question again is, what is fasting? What is fasting? Fasting is disconnecting yourself from the world. In other words, disconnect yourself from the human desire. That is fasting. As we begin this year 2021, it is good to disconnect from the world desire and connect to God. This is the time where you say, and I will say, Oh God, I'm coming to you. I want more of you and less of me. This is the time where I want, I want, you can say, I want to disconnect myself for 21 days from social media. Con disconnect yourself from social media for 21 days is part of your fasting. Stay away from social media for 21 days and get yourself in the scripture and prayer and you're going to feel that pain, physical pain and say something is missing in my life because you are not connecting to the social media. That is also a way of fasting. This is the time my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ where uh, you want to to. You want to pray and say, God, I want to see your favor in my life. This I want to see your presence. This is the time. This is the time where we want to experience the presence of God together. So as we begin this year, my fellow brothers and sisters, and sisters this is the time where you can say, Lord, I'm not going to take cookies for 21 days because I need you. I'm not going to eat meats. I'll eat the rest for 21 days. I need more of you, less of me. Our spiritual, our physical obedience will bring spiritual release. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I'm just going to invite... Uh, now, uh, Jennifer, to give us our closing song. Thank you.
praise the Lord. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Natalia. Uh, I fully believe that this song talks about surrender. As we begin, uh, uh, you know, you are not, you are not supposed that I'm late. Uh, you know, you guys started last week uh, fasting and prayer. You can still join us when starting today. You can join us. This is the time where we begin with uh, this spirit. We surrender. All of us as a church, we surrender to God. So as we are at the end of our service today, um, I'm just going to invite you to give. Uh, we have four ways. Now we have got, uh, we have four ways uh, where you can give to our church. By mail, or you can just go on, your, uh, on our website, Mount Hope United Methodist Church uh, website. Uh, you can just go to your phones. On, uh, uh, there is an app, a uh, bank of app. We give, or you can even uh, uh, give here in person. So may God bless you as you give to this church so that we can still carry on the good news of Jesus Christ. That will transform the world. The church will change the world. So your giving will help this church to grow and this church to reach many people. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us receive blessings. Holy and living Father, I just humble myself before your throne of grace, Lord. I pray. I pray to you, Lord. Pour out your Holy Spirit over this church. Lord, I pray. Pour out your Holy Spirit to help us to lift up our hands, Lord, to, to go through this physical obedience. So that, Lord, you can bring a spiritual release. Bless us as a church. And hear our prayer. Help us to go through this. So that our nation can be healed. Until, Lord, we show ourselves with this physical obedience to you. You alone, God. You will heal our land, our country, United States. Yes. You will heal, Lord, our country. Yes. Until we as children, Father, until we as your children, we present ourselves with a, with a physical obedience. The Lord of Daniel, you will heal our land. Bless us, Lord. And be with us. In Jesus name. We pray together. And we say amen. Go in peace and may God bless you. In Jesus name. Amen. Thank you Rocky. And thank you for everyone. Who's gonna, who are, who are, we're just connecting with us this morning. And put your comments. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you Rocky. Uh,